before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. I am so excited today to have my friend, Hillis. How are you doing today, Hillis? I'm good. You know, the weather is kind of sucky today because you know, it's rainy season in Florida. So, you know, it's going to be, you know, raining all day for the next five days, but that's okay. <laughs> It'll give yeah. me more time to play with your rife machine. And guys... Oh, please. I've been playing with it for, <laughs> like, the... And, and the things I can... Why is that the right word? I've been experimenting with it for the past month. Oh. You, Yeah. I can't wait to talk about this, but I told Hillis, because as you guys know, I, I've admitted this secret on air many, many times. Whenever somebody comes on my show, we, we don't hit record right away. We always chit-chat. And sometimes... <laughs> because everybody I record with 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 consistently is like a friend of mine now. Like we're not just doing shows together; we're actually friends. So we start chit chatting, and it, and then time slips away, and I'm like, "Damn, we should be recording this." Because Hillis, let's start over because we were talking because we were talking about websites and it being user friendly, and I had said something about like people of a certain age, like our age bracket, like the tail yeah. end of Generation X to the Zennials to the the beginning of the millennial time period, people born in like the seventies and the eighties. I was listening to a, co a comedian saying the other day that those of us born in the seventies and the eighties don't get enough credit because we started our life with no technology, really with no, with oh. no cell phones, um, with no computers. We started our lives with a landline. We, we had to learn how to do the Dewey decimal, decimal system. Um, at school, we had to learn how to get encyclopedias and write a bibliography, you know, and then all of a sudden, like overnight, when we became, you know, either starting off university or young yeah, adults. Typewriters, like, oh, oh, yeah, typewriters. Oh, yeah, typewriters. It was a gradual pro pro progression for me because I know that I had to, I started learning how to type on a typewriter. I was so bad at it. And then after that came the word processor. Remember those? Yes. And then, because you know, I remember doing, uh, and I actually had to find somebody to to do one of my papers on or with that had a uh, word processor. So it's like all these little nuances. And then, you know, as things, you know, became gradual, then it's like, okay, then now the computers are out. And it's like you had to learn how to use it, you know, with a, the giant floppy disk. Yeah, we're talking about the giant. Y'all remember the floppy disk? And the thing is, you had to, and you had like ten of them. Yes. Because it couldn't. Because the thing is, if you had a paper, you had to make sure it was, you know, you had enough room on it. Because you, there was like, I don't know, not even a meg of data on a floppy disk. Then, then the three point five, which in my, you know, as technology got technology got better, things got smaller. Because there was like the five point whatever floppy. Then there was the three point five, which is made of denser plastic and the thing is if you mess up the floppy disk your information would be gone gone just gone and don't and don't and don't put it in your magnet you'll be screwed <laughs> oh i know i know i remember as you're saying this i remember so my honors english class my junior year of high school we had to write an essay every single week based on a topic. And even though it was tedious, I actually, I really liked my English teacher that year. And I think he, what he did was really brilliant because by forcing us to write essays every single week on whatever, on whatever philosophical topic we were looking at in, in English literature, 
basically the rules of the games were we had to, to write the essay, but he also graded us based on our spelling and based on our grammar. So if yeah. we made spelling mistakes or grammar mistakes, we got an immediate zero. But then if we corrected it, he would like just take 10 points off of the overall average. So it really helped a lot with, and it might be why yeah. I'm so particular now, but I remember my junior year, I guess that was the year that everybody got a big computer in their living room. Like this was before like internet and all that. And everybody had, well, this was like the old school spell check, right? Because spell check's been around for a while, but spell check was not, when it first came out, it wasn't it was not reliable. It wasn't that, well, my English teacher, I remember like, it was probably like the first or second week of my junior year of high school. And everybody had turned their essays in that Friday and then we get them back on Monday. And he walked into the classroom. He goes, I think every single person in this class, I think you need to go and check your computers, your spell checks. Because every single person in this class, can't. you know how cannot is one word, C-A-N-N-O-T? Yeah. Yeah, it had been separated. Every single person had C A N space N O T. And at first, yeah. Mr. Saunders was like, "Oh, I just thought it was a couple people," but then I realized every single student had made this mistake. And he goes, "So yeah. I, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna disqualify you guys for this. I think this is a computer error." Um, yeah. but just check, but I, I always, so now I always remember to tell people cannot's one word because we had a whole lecture about that. Oh, oh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's one of those things. I mean, when, when we had technology, it wasn't perfect. I mean, it no. was evolving and it's still evolving, still is. you know, you know, which is, you know, why it's important now, you know, with, with the journey that I've been on, you know, with, with, with the rice machine, but we'll get into that in a moment, but you said something else prior to us airing today it just like uh it just got me and, and so what was what the was that, that yeah. was, okay uh, so guys i i this is such it's is hitting the internet by storm at this point with all these tiktoks and these instagram i am laughing so hard because i don't think you realize you're getting older until somebody points out you're getting older so there is this phenomenon that is going on right now where people who were born in the 70s and the 80s, as we're now getting into our 40s and our 50s, we're not aging, first of all, like generations before us, which is fantastic. I've seen so many people laugh and say it's because we ate a bunch of fake food growing up. So now we're just fake. Like, <laughs> we ate a bunch of, like, so I've seen- We're really preservatives. Yeah, preservatives, we're preserved. Like, I saw this really funny girl. She was like, it's because we just ate preservatives growing <laughs> And so we're preserved. Um, but it's interesting because you look back at old celebrities when they were in their 30s and 40s and they look so much older than we do now. And so anyway, so that's been that's fascinating. I'm so grateful to be in that that category of people. But I realized somebody had this TikTok and I, I asked you, Hillis, I was like, do you wear ankle socks or do you wear like high socks? Somebody was at the gym and they were filming all these people in the gym. And he goes, all these people, these people in their 30s, their 40s, their 50s, they look young enough to be in their 20s. But what gives them away? What gives their age away? Ankle socks. Ankle socks. I wear ankle socks and I laugh so hard. Like, you, you know, I don't, I mean, the, the invention of ankle socks honestly was like the best thing because for me, you know, when I was in high school, I was an athlete. So I was yeah. always you know, running and doing this and doing that and, and all the, I don't think, about the, I think ankle socks came out around the time when I was in high school or, or close to, but I remember, you know, in Bama school and maybe part of high school, I don't remember, you know, per se, but I, when it, the, the calf high and knee high socks, I hated them, especially when I was going through puberty because they were pulled on the hair on my <laughs> legs and I hated it. And that's why today I will not wear yeah. anything above my ankles. Plus the tan lines. Come on. I mean, yeah, exactly. I was supposed to say the tan lines. And well, I think, I, well, my, my, my boyfriend and I were talking about that too, because he was laughing in the, in the eighties, tube socks were kind of, were kind of popular, yeah. but he only wears ankle socks too. And we were talking about, I think, I think, and but people can correct me if I'm wrong. I think ankle socks originated with like long distance runners. Because yeah. when running, you want is you want as clear. You don't want to be as you you don't want your clothes. And swimmers, yeah. Like with swimmers, wear like you know you want to be able to be as light as you can when you're. And so that's how ankle socks originated. But yes, I only wear ankle socks now. And I was like, you are not going to catch me in the and 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 tube socks. Like that's not 
But all these youngsters, these Generation Z kids are all wearing these tube socks now. But somebody did post a picture of the tan lines on somebody from Generation Z. And they're like, now you're learning why we wore ankle, why we wore ankle socks. Because <laughs> that exactly. is why. <laughs> exactly. But, but, yeah, but you brought up a good point because I remember when I, when I, and I think they came out when I was in high school. Because I remember uh, when I was running because I was running cross country and track and that was a big thing because i remember my nike zooms that's what i was that's what i ran in <laughs> and it was specifically made for track and for running yeah. and and so and my mom was mad because if you don't do this and i spend all this money on these shoes nike zooms are expensive you know running people think running's a cheap sport it's not it's an expensive no. sport because the thing is, they were especially you know for for me since I've had since I have flat feet, it gave me a nice arch. Especially when you, you know, when you're doing distance running, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter that much. But sprinting, but you know, when you're sprinting, you have to have that, and that's what I had my Nike Zooms for was for my sprinting. Mm -hmm. And there was, you know, another another pointer because they also. Had to uh, if I wanted, to, I could put spikes in them or uh, outdoor yeah. that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was very important to have that grip and, and that arch because you know when you're on those blocks and, and you're running and you just have to have as much control as possible. And and for me personally, the reason why I didn't like tube socks or knee high or, or cow socks when I was running because it, it created an irritation and it wasn't like. Ugh, and then you get all sweaty and nasty, and I just didn't like it. Sometimes I ran, I ran uh, with no socks because you know the tighter the shoe, the better. Because sometimes I, you know, when I used to wrestle too, I used to uh, wear no socks too when I wrestled because of how the shoes were made uh, with the cloth interior. So it helped you get you that grip because when you're wrestling, you want as much, uh, you want it as tight as possible. So that way, when you maneuver it. So I mean, there's there's all these reasons, you know why, you know why not to wear something, you know, right. especially if you have the right conditions and the right sports, you know. They're for long distance running now. They're creating shoes that basically are like like your barefoot anyway, but it just kind of it's just a very thin strap over the foot for like trail running, which I get because I did cross country, which is like trail running, and that's a very different from like track because your your foot is on such different terrain, and it is yeah. easier because the stiffer the shoe, the harder it is to maneuver. Um, yeah. You know, but I will say it's funny. I watched this guy talking, this guy like Zennial like me who was talking about like the whole, the whole, he was like, I'm not giving up my ankle socks because Generation Z who are now in their 20s, they're coming into the, the workforce and adulthood. They think they keep discovering things like they think that they're the ones that created the skort. Do you girls remember the skorts? It was the shorts under a skirt. Oh, in the I 90s. They're like acting like they just discovered this. And all of us like Generation X and Millennials are like, that's been around. Hey, if that's you been around. Not, now, mind you, the only time when I wear, wear any uh, long socks is when I wear dress pants. That's yeah. about it. But it's so funny now. If you, now, when I was going to junior high and high school, and if you saw a Catholic girl, you better guarantee she had on shorts under her skirt. We, we all did that. Well, especially when we were younger, because when you're on the playground, your skirt's going to go up anyway. Oh, they, yeah. they, they think they've reinvented the scrunchie. I'm like, hello, I grew up on scrunchies. Like, I was shocked when scrunchies came back into style. And I was shocked that adult yeah. women were wearing scrunchies because it's such a little kid thing. Slap bracelets, they think they've created. They were the first to create the slap bracelet. Those are back. Those are back for kids. I was like, do you know how many of my teachers confiscated my slap bracelets growing up? Because you just sit there and slap. Anyway, so this guy was like, I'm not giving up my ankle socks because eventually this Generation Z is going to figure out why we wear ankle socks and they're going to claim responsibility for bringing, for bringing ankle socks into circulation when we've been rocking ankle socks for decades now. So I was uh, like, like there by jam. I was like, it's either ankle socks or no socks. Yeah, it's not. I mean, I, I remember before ankle socks were designed because they're so designed so well now that kids would like take in my my friends would like take um, tube socks and then fold it under their foot to create an ankle. Yeah, it's before they had actually started creating actual or, ankle socks. 
Well, what the guys used to do, they they had the 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 long sex, so they would like push them down, especially if you have a, if you if you wear on high top. So I was yeah. wearing high top sneakers and push them down on the calf on the on the calf yeah. socks, two socks, or you would take them and we did the opposite. We didn't fold them under; we we folded them down, like we were like roll them down. Yeah, it was like almost like a fold. To and I'm like. Yeah, that's like the thing. So you know. So so for, if anybody from Generation Z is listening, your elders have spoken. The reason why we <laughs> don't wear tube socks, you will soon learn if you continue this shenanigans with your high socks. Especially top. if you tan, you're yes. gonna have a massive, massive tan line, and yeah. you gotta, you know, wait till winter time to fix it. Yes, and you should be grateful, my friends from Generation Z, that you don't have to fold your socks over, that, that they actually now can create perfectly designed ankle socks. So so you're welcome. Your elders, the ancestors have spoken. The ancestors have spoken. <laughs> oh. Yeah. oh, my goodness. So, so, yeah, you know, technology and how it advanced, you know, the creatives, right? I was about to say, we're talking about the advancement in socks. But, but let's talk about this. So, so, um, Hillis, we were, you know, you now again, Hillis, you've been on my show so many times. I know people, a lot of, a lot of people know you through ASEA, through Gnostic TV. We've done stuff on the child, or the lost motherland of Mew, which we're continuing that series, guys. We've still got more videos for that. But yeah. I think a lot of people, and I know we've talked about this before, but just in case somebody missed this, you're a very interesting fella, Hillis, because. You're kind of you're kind of a, a jack of all trades in the sense that you like your your main focus in my per, my perspective of you. You can correct me if if I'm wrong. Your main dharma, what you really like to do, is 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 more along the spiritual lines of helping people and healing people. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, you know, and it's just so happened that everything that I've learned from my childhood up until now, you know, ankle socks and all. <laughs> You know, has, has led me to this because, you know, when we step into the path of spirituality, it almost as if it's a calling or a beckoning. But you have to, and, and I'm sure, you know, there are probably some monk Buddhists who, from the time they were born or the time they were little kids, you know, lived in their spiritual life, mm -hmm. as opposed to someone like myself or someone like you. Well, we had a life before we stepped onto this path, you know, but you have to look at everything that happened before that. And so that helped me to have a greater understanding and sensibility, uh, empathy and compassion for those who I serve in that space. You know, everything from doing marketing and operations and customer service, you know, I still write, you know, I still do poetry. You know, uh, there's all these things that I still do, but, you know, the, the life before in the corporate setting has assisted in the uh, me obtaining the wisdom and knowledge of allowing myself to be of greater service, you know, of really listening and understanding what it is that people want and, yeah. and yeah. as the collective. And I just want to say that, you know, now that I feel my time of being a hermit is done, Everyone could be on the lookout for more videos from me. I'm going to be doing, uh, actually in, on the 21st next week, I'm going to be doing two live, uh, virtual summits that day. I didn't realize I was doing one in the morning, one in the afternoon. And I'm going to be doing a lot more stuff in the coming months. So I'm back. Yay! Well, you know what's interesting as you're saying that, Hillis, I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying and I, it's, it's interesting because in the yoga world, we would call people like you and me or our friends watching, like we're what, what they call householders because yeah. we're not, we're not Brahmin and we weren't born in an ashram and we don't live an ashram life. We actually, yeah. our Dharma is in the, in the secular world. And so they call yeah. us householders. Well, and so many people I think have this idea that if you could just go live in an ashram or if you could just go live, you know, how peaceful your life would be and how spiritual you would become. But I have heard actually the opposite that those of us from those of us who are not brahmins who are not um born in ashrams like Hill, that that have the householder lifestyle and yet we still seek out spiritual guidance 
we end up becoming the, uh, according to some of these stories I've heard, we end up becoming the stronger of the healers because yeah. there's more friction in our, in order for us to obtain our own spiritual development, we have way more friction than somebody who's in an ashram and friction is resistance and it just makes you stronger. So, um, so I think it's pretty poetic that you picked up on that because there is an understanding, right? There is somebody who lives in an ashram for their whole life if someone were to come to them for healing, they're not going to be at a place to really understand what it's like to live in a secular world, are they? Yeah, exactly. And so what's even more fascinating, and, you know, as I expanded on my journey, one of the things that just kept coming to me, you know, and mind you, I didn't call or ask for this in any particular way. I just asked myself to be, allow myself to be of service. And in that journey, most of the clients I serve are women, and a, a portion of those women have been sexually abused. And so it's in the space of knowing how to find the cause of the trauma, understand the cause, understanding the space of it, and really navigating that space of so mind you you know i haven't had that experience myself but understanding it witnessing it and feeling it gives me that that connective sensibility to be of service and i think that's that's what's most important is having that sensitivity that empathy that compassion for anyone who is of service you know uh, and allow them to be on that open vessel you know, and I think that one of the things that really opened me up to that greater extension is the 10 years of me doing plant medicine, you know? Yeah. And, you know, when you're working with, with master teachers of the earth, it just opens you up to really understanding the, the violence that has endured on the planet, you know, whether it was known or unknown the the ravaging the savagery all the the lower vibrating energies and frequencies you know that that the planet holds that we somehow uh connect to when we are in that space it just really speaks to okay what's next and, and how do we solve this or how can we clear this and and how do we move and navigate into a better feeling space by accepting what already happened Right, accepting it and, and taking your power. But it's so interesting when you said that, Hills, I just got chill bumps. Um, I didn't even get a chance to tell you this offline. I had to make a, I had to make a video yesterday. I'm in the process right now myself of being, I've for a little bit over a year now from this guy named Gordon from the, um, you, uh, the Telegram channel, Enough is Enough. He does shows based on my, he does and i'm gonna have to block some of these wor words guys but you know what we're saying um on my sexuality and he's literally as of earlier this week is trying to produce a picture of me to put out in the in, i mean it's bad it's really bad um and i finally had to make a video yesterday addressing it and i yesterday even um i went to the grocery store and i almost had like you know living in a, in a city I'm used to there being people everywhere. And so I went to the grocery store yesterday around, it was like around lunchtime. So there's, there's a deli at the grocery store. So there's, it was busy. And as a woman, like talking about that, understanding that from your male perspective, um, Hillis is so important. It's something I've been thinking about too, because a after all this started happening yesterday and I went to the grocery store, usually as a woman, I am aware of my surroundings, but in at the, at the grocery store in the middle of, a, of the day on Monday, I'm not, I'm more aware of where my purse is than anything because nothing's going to happen. Because that had just happened, I all of a sudden started to become hyper aware of all the men who were around me. And I started to like, I, this poor woman, if for some reason you are watching this, this was this beautiful, a little bit older me black woman was in the grocery store. And I started to follow her with my cart because I felt safe around her because all of a sudden I started having this like panic attack because all this stuff had just happened with the threat of this picture that this guy's doctoring of me. And all of a sudden just started feeling very vulnerable around all these men in the grocery store. And this poor woman, if you're watching, I wasn't stalking you. I just felt safe around you. So I like followed this woman with my cart because I wanted to be by another woman, you know, because, you know, and then I finally just left. I only got like half the groceries and I sat in my car and I started having a panic attack attack and I was telling my boyfriend I was like I feel like I'm I, I feel this and he goes Bryce 
harassment. This is what's happening right now. And I was thinking about that, Hillis, and I've been watching my boyfriend deal with it. And I think even though I, men also experience this, I totally get that. Men also can be, can be harassed too. Yeah. But I think for a, a man like you, Hillis, or like my boyfriend, it doesn't matter what your sexuality is. It doesn't matter. But the fact that you understand, you can have empathy for that feeling of vulnerability. And when that happens to you as a woman or a man, when that happens to you, that feeling of your, your power being taken from you and that feeling that, that you are not your own. I mean, this guy from Enough is Enough is basically trying to own my story and tell my history. And he's, ex as, as my boyfriend said this morning, this is exploitation. This is 100% yeah. exploitation. And the fact uh, that you're able to understand, I, I just want to say that I want to applaud you, Hillis, that you're able to like take that in because it is such a, it's such a hard feeling to be in and to have a, a and I think Hillis for, in, in my opinion, just my opinion as a woman who's gone through that to have a male regardless of what that male sexuality is, but just a male in general to be gentle and to offer the antidote of healing is so yeah. powerful. Is so yeah. powerful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, you know, I know we set out to, to talk about spooky too and, and my experience over the past month with, with it, but I want to address something that I think is really important. And I think this is something that's in the collective in the community of spiritual people. You know, people say, take my power back. Before the, you said it in this moment, I had no issue with that phrase. Yeah, take your power back. But when we think about that, when we, when we feel into that, the energy of take my power back, did you give it away? No. Mm -hmm. Was it taken from you? Possibly. You know, especially in the sense of a physical, uh, you know, or if there was a close connection. But when we claim the phrase, take my power back, you have to look into, you have to feel into the responsibility of that and, and how was it taken or, or was it given away? And, and things of that nature. And so we have to come up with something better than, than take my power back. I claim my I power. Claim I claim back. who I, well, not necessarily claim it back because it never, it never went anywhere. Yeah. Your power doesn't, your power doesn't leave you. Your, your soul, which is the source of your power, God energy does not leave you. It mm -hmm. stays with you. It's in the space of we forget. Yeah, and, and, because we get so beat down. Yeah, and so, which is why, you know, one of the things that I've been saying for all these years, we have to remember who we are. Yeah. We're not awakening to anything. We're not losing anything. We have to remember. Remember your power. Remember your strength. And that's in the process of what I'm doing now with this, with this journey. I mean, this personal journey I've been on for almost two years. I mean, it's... It's really been an interesting one, and I definitely would get more into that, into the fullness of this two-year journey. But the last month has been very interesting. I Well, let's <laughs> talk about it, because I had, you know, Hillis, we developed a friendship through ASEA, and we got to know more and more and more about each other. And when Spooky 2 was brought to me, um, to my attention, I immediately thought of you. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've got to talk to Hillis about, especially after I did the episode, the latest episode I did with Brad, which I'll put down in the description box below if you guys missed it, where he's, he works basically for Spooky too. And as I'm talking to him and I'm listening to this guy in, in the most adorable way possible, geek out about like Tesla technology, and all that kind of stuff. I was like, this is adorable. I kept thinking, oh my God, I would love to be on a round table with Hillis, Brad, and like Shanti from Aquarius Rising Africa, just because these are people that think so outside the box, but they think of outside the box in the, in the sense of like ancient understanding of our, of our own energy and, and the, and, and our own, as you're saying, our own source of power in relationship to the world around us. And, you know, we've been so separated from, from our own selves because of, of modern stuff like uh, medicine and stuff like that, which is, has its place for sure. But we've forgotten that we actually have 
like these frequencies. And so you ended up getting a Rife machine from Spooky Two, and now yeah. you're actually a part. You're actually an affiliate now. We you're sponsored by Spooky Two now as well, just like I am. So yes. before, before I forget, guys, before I forget, because we're gonna talk more, but before I forget, for this episode. Hillis's links are going to be down in the description box below. So if you get 5% off by typing in, what's your code? Hillis Spooky 2 or something? What's your code? Yeah, something like Hillis 2 or Hillis Spooky 2, something like that. It's in the email. I'll put it in the description box, guys. For, for this episode, you get 5% off if you put in Hillis's name. And But the beautiful thing is, like, you have been, you've had this machine now for, what, a month? It's, it's 34 days to as of today. And you've been using it on yourself. Yes, I have. And and I tell you, you know, it's it's very fascinating because, you know, from the perspective of one who does energy healing or uses energy medicine, it's very interesting in the respect of, you know, when you have someone who comes to me and says they want to clear their shama, their their shama, <laughs> their their trauma. Their shame, their pain, their guilt, all of that. They want to come and clear that space. It's like, yeah, I can do that easily. But someone who has cancer or multiple sclerosis or some genetic uh, or cellular issue, then it's it's more of a process of understanding the root cause of that, which I still do. But looking at it from a perspective of how did this. Uh, come into the body, you know, because it starts off as energy. Yeah. So, you know, you have, so it's a, it's a space of reverse lookup, if you will, looking at it of, of where it is in the body yeah. and then tra then traversing that energy back to the source of, right. of when did it start, right. how did it start. And how so... It manifest itself. Exactly. What, what was the initial thought that manifested whatever issue we're talking about within the health of the body? Right, or even action. And so that that part is is easy for me to do. I can do that and, and, and work with anyone to help them. But the the how it manifests in the body is a little bit different because you have something that multiplies at the speed of thought or at the speed of of the cellular renewal. And so when you have something that multiplies that fast, it's sometimes challenging for the energy to keep up with it. Yeah. And so, you know, you can, and so there's the diets and things like that. But what I appreciate about the Rife Machine, the Spooky 2, is the fact that it works at the same rate and frequency. And there's... 60,000 frequencies in the system and there's a frequency for literally everything. And what floored me was the fact they even have frequencies for chakra stuff and, and aura stuff. And I'm like, what? Yeah, because it's usually usually in these these energies they talk about just like basic sicknesses, but then you were texting me some of the stuff they had, like different blockages and all that kind of stuff, which is wild, isn't it? But there's yeah, different. I mean, and, and mind you, when I look at these frequencies, there's the space of sweeps. So it's a broad spectrum of frequencies that are being hit. But then there's these very specific frequencies with decimal points, so it's very finely tuned. And after looking through this, and, and I just don't do anything, you know, especially with this, I do my research. And so I was looking at other life machines, they don't have anything that Spooky 2 has, which is, and, and the thing is, that, that kind of amazed me because, you know, you think of a, of a device like this, you think they're pretty much all the same. The answer is no, they're, this is like, what? No, they're not and, the same. No. Yeah. And so that's, that's what really floored me is the fact of their vast library, how long they've been around it, and, and what you can do with this. And I can tell you that when you when anyone gets this device this machine is always recommended like brad said in his in the interview that she did with him is to get two generators and it's very important that you do that because it works in killing pathogens while healing the body as well so it's like a dual thing that you're doing as opposed to kill 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 them and heal 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 yeah. we can alternate this you know all these different variations you can do but the 
But when you first get it, there's what's called the Terran Protocol. And I tell you, this is the detox program. It lasts for 11 days. And if anyone has done a detox, you haven't done a detox like this. Oh, I've really? Because I'm like, yeah. detoxes are gnarly sometimes. So, no, this, I mean, listen, this, I've, done, I've done detoxes where stuff has come out of my body where I don't even know how it got there in the first place. <laughs> no, no. The thing is, is, this is very gentle on your body, but you are keenly aware of what's going on. Really? And I, yeah, very, very much so. And the thing is, the reason why I, I may be more aware than other people doing this process is because, you know, the first like three weeks, it wasn't until like the last week, week and a half until I, I felt like I'm feeling like myself again. And when we have, you know, and people don't say, oh, no, there's no parasites in my body. Yeah, we all have parasites. We all have pathogens. We all have whatever in our bodies that aren't supposed to be there. And during this time of detox and me running uh, special protocols that I made custom for myself, but you know, at some point I'll get into when I want to share that that personal story. But you talk about mood swings, you talk about shifts in the body. I mean, when when you have a parasite or any cancer or anything that's in the body, and it's been living there for a few months, a year, however long, and we begin to take on that personality. We begin yeah. to take on that energy and people aren't aware of that. And so we can, you know, detox, have the right diet, this, that, and the other. We can go through all of that. And it really won't change much. But as we do this, as you detox and the personality begins to grow because it's in the state of survival mode. And so when you're killing off something, it goes into survival mode, then the whole personality mood shift tends to happen. And for me during this period, I'm like, oh, crap, what is this now? What am I feeling now? It's like, this isn't me. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? I was craving sugar like you would not believe. I mean, like every day, like a few hours a day, I would find some sort of healthy sugary snack, whether if it was dark chocolate, uh, some sort of uh, fig bar, whatever to eat because the the parents I would ever want it to stay alive, and that's how right. it was delivered by the sugar. Right, and so it's this whole process of really understanding the the mood shift, the personalities that are in us. You know, and when they say you are what you eat, yeah, you are what you eat, you are what you become because it's there. And, you know, it wasn't until this time, you know, within the past week, I'm like, I kind of feel like myself again. So does that mean everything is dying off and I just got to be like really do an extensive flush out of my body? Is that what's happening here? <laughs> it's, I love that you said that, Hillis, because I've, I've spoken about this before. I do not like when people say they're intuitive eaters, especially if they don't understand energy and food. Because yeah. Ayurvedic medicine, which is is more homeopathic, where we talk about the dosha system, we're taught that what you crave is actually the opposite of what you need. And you're right, because it's some imbalance, whether it's a parasite, like attracts like, and it's trying to stay alive. And so if you deprive it of, and you eat the opposite, then you're going to rebalance your energy. And that's, and I think, I think intuitive eating to an extent when you've worked on yourself long enough can be a thing. But in the beginning, if you don't have any education into like the energy, energetic principles behind food yeah. and, and, and parasites and diseases, what you're craving nine times out of 10 is what you actually don't need because it's, yeah. it's, it's not you. It's, it's whatever is is holding you back is what's feeding off of it and so you know i love that you said that it's not you that was craving the sugar it was the parasite through yeah you. Uh, it's real interesting because i have a dear friend of mine who you know is like me you know she you know we we do the same things and i was telling her I said, oh i can't anymore this is just too much she's like no you can do it you're strong you're stronger than that i'm like you have you what? Know, I was telling her, like, you have no idea oh, of, yeah. of, of 
the overwhelming sense of, of desire for these sugary foods and for yeah. this and for that. I mean, granted, yeah, I mean, I've, I've done a dieta for eight months. I mean, I've done, you know, fasting. I've done it all, but this was different. I mean, yeah. this was, this was, you know, reminded me of a time where I did a psychedelic journey and I in there. and did plant medicine with it. So the, so the, so you're not experienced. Don't ever do a psych. And I, I'm not talking about ayahuasca. I'm mm-hmm. talking about mushrooms. Yep. And and plant medicines from the Amazon. Yeah. And if you are not experienced, I do not uh, suggest that for anyone because you have to have a special kind of mindset when doing this because you talk about infighting and and. and Honestly, I thought I was schizophrenic. Yeah, oh, I, 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 I hear you. I most of the time with any type of plant medicine, you, you need. They are very strict about having a shaman with you at all times, yeah. or, a, or a babysitter. Some of these um, different diets will have actual babysitters for for you because you are going to go through literally the most psychedelic dark night of the soul and and you don't know how you're going to respond and to have somebody there with you to yeah it's definitely and i I, i'm here i absolutely i think it's great that people are starting to become more aware of these avenues but because we've been so cut off from them i think people don't realize how intense they can actually be yeah they're very intense. And so what I experienced for the first few weeks doing the rife machine was like that. Oh, really? But not, but not on such a high or dramatic scale. Yeah. Because what I was saying hallucinating was very or... gentle. Well, I wasn't even really in the space of hallucination when I did that particular right. journey. It was me, you know, like I said. I feel like I was schizophrenic, but I knew I wasn't. I was like, well, this is the medicine. This is this. This is that. And like, I was very aware of what was happening. Just like I was very, it took me a minute to kind of gauge what was happening with, with the right, because the, it was very gentle, very easy on the body. And I tell you that for the past month, usually I drink about, you know, two liters of water a day. That includes like any, any, uh, smoothie that I make or any tea that I make, I'm up to about three liters a day. So you're flushing big time. Yeah. Your body's yeah. flushing. And I hate to even use the word hallucination. I want to make that clear, guys. I don't think people are actually hallucinating. That's just the only only word I know to use to describe what you see when you're, because people yeah. will see different things depending on what yeah. they need to see. I actually am someone who believes you're really, but the only word I can use to describe it is a hallucination, even though. Yeah, no, I take no offense to it. It's, it's just, you know, make sure that people understand the, the process that I went through personally. And like I said, I don't recommend anyone to do it unless you have me present, someone like me or a shaman, someone who has experience in these uh, sacred spaces, you know, yeah. of, of the journey of the mind and of the heart and of the body. Yeah, it's, it's you know, I know, I think Brad spoke about this. I know we talk about this in traditional yoga a lot as well. Sometimes you can have not only physical stress as far as like your thoughts and your cravings, but sometimes when you're going through this, you can start throwing up. You can break out into a fever. There's all sorts of stuff that can happen. I don't think people expect that to happen. But when your body is going through a detox and your body releases, it's going to come out in whatever way it needs to come out. So sometimes that is throwing up. Sometimes it is diarrhea. Sometimes that is a fever. A fever is burning. There's karma that's actually burning off. Um, and so- Or just schizophrenia. <laughs> or, or just schizophrenia pops up out of nowhere. You know, so it's, it's like, surprise, surprise. You never know which uh, which uh, magic gift bag you're gonna get. So when, when that starts to happen to you though, um, it can be very story the anticipation of something uncomfortable happening can add more intensity to the experience yeah. because people are, so I always want to make sure people are aware. It's funny because my last trip to India, the last time I was in India and I didn't know that was going to be because right after I got back, that's when the world shut down. Um, it was, I had just gotten authorized. So it was a huge deal. And at that point, simultaneously, like while I was in school, my friend Mark and I were rescuing puppies. We brought like five dogs with us back to the United States and these puppies we're down in this gutter. So these, these mother wild dogs in India, it's kind of clever. They have their puppies in the gutters, these deep gutters, 
because it acts like a playpen. The puppies can't get out. So the mothers can get out and go do what they got to do and come back and their puppies are still together. But it, 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 they're deep. So you, it takes a lot to jump in and pull yourself out again. Well, over the course of, of the t time where we were taking the puppies out of the gutter, taking them, th them to the vet to get prepared, get their little passports, taking them back to the gutter, you know, you're climbing in and out. I ended up getting severely sick, like severely. I had a, a very high fever. I was, I had never been that sick in my life. And actually my boyfriend was here at, in the United States at the time. And I didn't know this, but his assistant told me that he was looking for flights to India because he actually thought that I was going to pass. He, he, he was certain that I was done, that I was going to pass away because that's how sick I was. Well, I ended wow. up, I was fine. I, I flew back to the United States. And when I came back, I went to the doctor here and I had a lot of testing done. And it turned out I had ingested um, human feces. And it was probably from coming in and out of the gutters because humans in India, men especially, yeah. sometimes go to the bathroom and then probably got on the dogs and it got in my mouth. Well, and I laughed about it because the uh, the health department like sent me a letter and I had to call them. I thought they were going to send me back to India. I was like, what's going on? And that they had, they just basically had to make sure that I didn't get sick here in America, that it, that it wasn't yeah. an outbreak of human feces here in the United States. Um, that's all it was. Well, over time, and I already knew this, I already knew that because I've been in this world for a long time that yoga fevers are common and that before you have a breakthrough sometimes you do get sick it's almost like that slingshot you have to be pulled back a little bit before you propel forward but over time after that last trip so many things started happening and, and progressing in my spiritual life that I realized karmically because I kept thinking, why did I get this and not my friend Mark? Mark was right beside me going in and out of the same gutters. Like, why is he fine? And I'm not going to the hospital. You know, and I, and I realized, I was like, there was a karmic agreement because I got so sick that I every I threw what was coming out of all all holes in my body <laughs> coming out of right and so and it was and it took a long time literally it took a long time for that shit to pass like a long wow. time wow. Um, and and I realized over over time that it was that was I believe I don't believe in coincidences or accidents I think that was a karmic yeah. agreement yeah and it got me stronger and it cleared out so whosoever feces that was like it it cleared out whatever needed to be cleared for next for a new pattern to be created and of course my guardian angel and my guides are probably like i know a clever way to get this girl <laughs> so, um, but it's so it's so you know and, and and you know so i think i think that that's just another example of when you come and do these rife machines or any type of of progressive um alternative healing for the overall yeah. system for the mind yeah. body and spirit I do. I, again, I want to reiterate, I think some people just have it in their head that they're going to walk in and after the first session or whatever it is, it's just going to be sunflowers, um, rainbows and sunflowers and butterflies. No, no, not at all. no. You're going to drop and, and, down before you come back up again. Yeah, and uh, what I appreciate, you know, the database is six, over 60,000 frequencies. That's a lot. And what I appreciate is that, you know, one is bad because I talked to Brad throughout this process because I'm still learning. And at some point, probably in the very near future, I'm going to be offering this to my clients. I was going to gonna ask. Them. Yes. Because I'm understanding how it works. And so I had to use it on me first to really mm -hmm. understand it. And one of the things that I did, because like I said, I have two generators, one running for the healing pathogens, et cetera, et cetera. And then I have one for healing. And the one that I have for healing is to help balance the mind, body, and mood, and mind, and spirit. Because if I didn't add that in there, I probably, well, I probably would have been a little, a little schizophrenic, a little longer than than uh, I was. But since I added this particular frequency in there, it, it helped to balance out those energies. So it's really understanding what works for you. And I like it because it, it's, it's very individualized. You yeah. Know, everyone, you know, there's, there's probably a standard for every, you know, you, you start off with the core standard stuff and then you customize it and expand it out. And, and, it, and, and that's what, it, and the reason why I'm drawn to this, why I like so much because it's like the energy work that I do because there's, there's the core of what I do. The understanding the individual and the details really helps yeah. to to expand it out and so this is definitely a complement to the work that i do 
you know, for anyone who has, you know, cancer or anyone who has any long-term illness, you know, that they've been experiencing with, I definitely recommend this. Because, you know, for someone like me who's been working with people, I have had clients who had MS or had any other uh, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome or um, trying to think of someone else who I worked with that had a very, uh, I don't want to say debilitating illness, but something that was long-term. And when you have these long-term issues, it takes a while. Then energy sessions. So this will assist in the physical space and for me to work in the energetic space. So I, I feeling that the two work definitely synergistically. You know, I even had uh, my teacher probably would kill me if he if I say this or uh, uh, uh well, anyway, he doesn't care. It's part of his story. So, so part of my teacher, uh, what a part of what he used, because he, you know, at one point had uh, herpes, you know, at one point. And, you know, that's the hard thing to get rid of. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that he used was an infrared uh, watch on his wrist. And so he would wear really? this infrared, yeah. He would wear this infrared, and it's almost like the cold laser feature that's on the rice machine oh interesting so, yeah so you know the, so you know when you have stuff like this that's, that's reoccurring and keeps coming back you know this is honestly probably the best way to to get rid of it because you know granted we are all healers but there's just some things that's like okay where did this come from and so he he used this infrared um watch on his wrist to help Clear that out of his system. So there, are, there are things that that are uh, that are that are possible. And I love this machine because you have the cold laser feature, which kills pathogens in the body. You have the e uh, emf uh, attachment that helps to heal things in the body. Both operate on the infrared frequency, but both do two different things. You also have the remote system that I use twenty four seven use it all day, every day. It's helping, it's helping I do my personal uh, cold laser treatments, you know. And so it's just, it's very beneficial. And what I liked about this, you know, the, the primary reason why I got this is is because once you've done this, the, the, it kills the pathogen, so it's permanent. Mm-hmm. Like you, you're taking some sort of supplement for three months or six months or up to a year. And you stop taking and it's like, what? So you can get yourself actually off of that karmic loop of whatever the issue is you're working through. That's keeping you on that karmic loop of going away, coming back, going away, coming back. Once you've, you've nipped it in the bud, it's gone. And that's yeah. kind of the point of us on, on, on our earth. You know, it's I'm going to actually pull it up now. It's so funny. I love, I'm a huge believer in light therapy. I have a, a red light mask I wear sometimes. Um, there's so many different... Um, now, which one's the one that you got, Hillis? I got that one, the one for five. So yeah, that's the one that I got. And I will say that I had to order the PEMF attachment separately from that. And, I, and I'm glad that I did because it, it just adds an extra layer of benefit for the physical aspect. But uh, I, I mean, it's, it's just both. And then as he says, wait, go back. As he says, no, 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 oh, oh, yeah, do, no, 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 but you are, sorry, the, yep, that one. As it says, do killing and detox at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> just nip it in the butt, you guys, just nip it in the butt. Um, yep, and they have so many devices, the they have so many different levels of the machine. That's what I want to get next, though, is this the plasma, yeah, the plasma and then the scalar machine. Now, the scalar machine that's something I, I'm excited for. I can't wait to get my hands on that because I've been in an EES machine. I've been in a scalar machine, and it's really, really good. But it's not like the it's not like the rice machine because you have to sit in the scalar frequency for a lot longer, and it's not as specific as it's not targeted to specific frequencies or pathogens, diseases, or illnesses in the body. The scalar machine is more broad. It doesn't sweep. It's almost like a smart uh, machine to where it goes into the body and the body begins to reconfigure itself. 
as opposed to the right is more targeted. So yeah, that's what, I mean, I, I like, I love them both, but this one is precise, you know, yeah. as opposed to the scalar that's more broad. And this website, like I've, I've, um, I've definitely reviewed this website a lot and they, they, it, it's pretty, um, user friendly. Like they have all these uh, websites, you know, all different questions, contact us, get support. And, um, for those of you guys, uh, as you said, Hillis, you've been speaking with Brad. Uh, if you watched the episode, Brad was very available to people to help. And, and Hillis, so I know you're going to, I was going to say, you're going to start for people who don't really want to purchase the machines or maybe don't have that much money to purchase the machine in one go you're going to start uh -huh. offering your machine to use on people soon right with with clients yeah because what i did and, and this was you know through my own research and talking to people and really understanding the process and so what i have is a refurbished laptop that's dedicated just for that i don't use my laptop my personal laptop because i can't yeah use it all it would be literally on all the time i would kill the battery so i just got a refurbished one that I just run the Spooky 2 off of. And what I had in my mind initially, and this is subject to change, but what I had initially is for people who are watching this and want to work with me, both you know using the Rife machine and doing uh, energy services, no energy medicine or one or the other. I mean, I could, in my mind, the initial cost of purchasing two generators so I will purchase two generators on your behalf, which would be two hundred and twenty dollars. Yeah. You give that to me, and I will have those two generators dedicated to you only, and not interrupting, you know, it with my stuff for someone else's. Right. Right. And 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 the small fee, monthly fee, to keep it running. It's not it would be anything astronomical. Nothing that no one could afford. I don't know what that fee would be yet. But to start off with would be the two twenty to uh, have your own dedicated generator, and that's so good. Like for someone like me, sometimes I get overwhelmed, you know, because as we were talking about at the beginning of this episode, I'm the I'm one of the ancients, I'm one of the elders now. So sometimes, and there are a lot of people watching feel that way. Like I still know how to use that Dewey Decimal System. I'm gonna die knowing how to just use that Dewey Decimal System. So I know some people sometimes get super overwhelmed with the technology side of this because it's not. Oh yeah, no, this is very old. If you're not from, if you are not tech savvy, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, but but if you if you if they seek that through you, that's awesome. They just get the generators, and you can set that up for them, and so yeah. they get the benefit of it. And that's one thing that I love the story that Brad taught about the the constipated his friend's constipated dog. Yes, I love that story. Was it a, a, to a, a nail of the dog? I forgot whatever. Yeah, I, I, think, the dog. I, I don't know if it was a hair or a nail. Because they can do that with the machine. They just take like a part of your hair or nail some part, and they put it in. And it, it, so it, can, it, read, it reads your DNA makeup. And yes, I think most people knowing our, our energy of our body is not just in our biological, you know, so it can, energy has no, no time limit, right? It has no barrier. Yeah. Well, yes, yeah, I, will, I love that story. I laugh so hard because basically I'll, I'll pair it. If, if I remember correctly, guys, the episode's down below. You can rewatch it. But Brad said one of his friends, it was a female dog, right? Like she was constipated. Yeah. Yeah. And we all know how miserable that is. And so his friend was like, can this machine help her relieve herself? And Brad was like, absolutely, no problem. And he went to go, he took like the nail or the hair or whatever, and he went to go start the machine. He looked at his friend. He was like, actually, why don't you take her home first? Text yeah. him when you're home, and then I'll start it. And so the friend did that, text him. He started the machine. Within like minutes, she was relieved of her constipation. Yeah. yeah Which was yeah, smart yeah. of Brad because he didn't want that dog Losing yeah, out in the street. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, that's one so, thing. Yeah, that's one thing I'm excited to do. Once I really, really, I mean, I know how to how how to use it, but I want to get more generators for my for for the babies around here too. I mean, they're not old, but I'm like just when they get to that stage, I'm like, yeah, here's a little extra boost for you. There's actually, and I'll send you some of these hills. I just realized I need to send you some of these. I have some testimonials that Yura has sent me, and one of them is is a dog, a testimonial of, of somebody's. I think his he turned the toward the ACL a dog, and it ended up saving the owner because you know your fur babies 
mine's asleep in the bed right there. You'll do anything for your fur babies, just like your children. Like you, you're there, your responsibility and you want them to be healthy and happy. And, but, but medical bills for, for animals can get very expensive. And the Rife machine saved this um, human mom, like thousands of dollars and yeah. also cured her dog at the same time. So in the long run, there is benefits to financial benefit to having one of these machines available, even if it is going through someone like Hillis versus yourself, if you don't feel comfortable doing it yourself, you know? And so, um, so yeah, you guys, I'm, I, I think that this, this is, um, definitely a part of our hidden history and our, our ancestors knew about vibrational healing. Oh yeah. And, yeah. And, and now we're just starting to rediscover it. I think our ancestors are like, finally, <laughs> uh, like, and speaking of our ancestors, I'm excited to do, to record part three. Part three is going to be amazing. Of Mew. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Part three of, of the lost civilization of Mew. Yeah. Cause I, I'll be done with the book the third book this weekend. And I tell you this, some mind blowing stuff. And I even read about how they had a flying machine. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. wow. We know. Right. I mean, I laugh because I love <laughs> doing deep dives on this channel. And I'm always like, look guys, when we do historical deep dives, I know full well the narrative I'm telling you might not be accurate. Like we know full well, like you ain't fooling us anymore. We're, you, we're all a bunch of J James Church uh, Church Wars now, aren't we? We're all going with Yeah, I mean, it reminds you, I mean, yeah, there's there's some really mind blowing stuff in in this third book. I mean, everything to how, and and the name of this one is the Children of Moon. Yeah. So we learned about how the different tribes got started, how the different race colors started. And I think I told you one of the things uh, that determined the color of skin was the food that they ate. Oh, that makes sense. Actually, that actually really makes sense to me because I know um, vitamin D, is that what you, that's the one you get from the sun, right? Vitamin, yeah. vitamin, vitamin D. Yeah. yeah. So people who have, you know, vitamin D is what's, you know, when you get sun, that's what's created the, the darker complexion of people in the sun. But people who live in Siberia, in northern, um, close to like up close to like the Alaska, the Barren Strait, they're yeah. olive skinned, but they live in a very, it's because of the fish they eat. So that yeah. makes sense. That makes a yeah. lot of sense. Yeah. And they even talk about where the origin of the word God came from. So that's also interesting. So there's, so there's some uh, interesting tidbits. So you guys got to stay tuned. So in about a week or two, we'll, we'll have this uh, episode ready for you guys. And we'll have, um, oh, I don't want to say yet because we have another guest we're going to bring on. I don't want to spoil it for our, for our friends, but it's yeah. super fascinating. Actually, that reminds me, reminds me, Hillis, I want to send you a channel I found. Um, I'm not going to say it online because there's some interesting stuff that we might want to look at. Yeah. Um, I would say there's a channel that actually my boyfriend found that's really fascinating. That kind of goes more with, it's a different perspective, but it's also kind of the same too. It's like all these people are figuring out our history is not correct. And yeah. they're all kind of on the same thought pattern of, of what's going on, but they call it different things, you know? So it's just fascinating. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's an exciting time, right? This is a renaissance yeah. of sorts of enlightenment. It is, and if anyone from Diet TV is watching, I want to have my own show talking about this because no one else is talking about this. I mean, no one else has done, if they have done research on this, they, they have skipped over all the important stuff because this is, this is history changing. That yeah, people absolutely. have ignored this, his research. People have ignored his storytelling. And, and I'm going to say this and then we can wrap it up, but one of the things that he talked about in, in the third installment of his series is the reason why they wrote on stone is because they wanted the messages to be enduring. They didn't want to write on paper because they had paper then. But the stone would last. Right. They didn't want, they because they knew of the times they were living in. So they didn't want to write it on something that just wouldn't be there anymore. They wanted their message to resonate. And stay, and, not going anywhere. And, right, exactly. And that's what it that's what it's doing now. It's resonating because of this man in the early nineteen hundreds. Out of curiosity. And I haven't read it yet and I'm so interested. So the end of this book, you you going if you haven't started this, you have to get to the end of the book. 
he or maybe just read the chapter where he talks about his relationship with the right Oh really? Oh, I can't. Yeah. I, I just think I wish I'd been a fly on the wall with between because I my time I've been in India. There's Indians, in my opinion, have the best senses of humor. Like they're so funny sometimes. And so yeah, I can't. I, I'll have to look. I haven't had a chance to look at it yet, but I will definitely because it is. I love. I love history anyway, and to have all this ancient history kind of presented to us, yeah. it makes more sense to me. Like what they're what the what the alternative history is actually makes more sense. It's more common sense. Yeah. Exactly, and he, yeah, and, and and just to give pe what people to expect, you know, other than what we just talked about about the origin of the word God, you know, the different skin colors, how they came about, but also too, he goes into each continent, talking about North America, South America, uh, the settlements of Africa, uh, Egypt, talking about the settlements of southern india and mid india mm -hmm. so i mean these and, and parts of asia so they these points are very critical so this is what we're going to talk about more so in this section i know we covered it in part two but he gets more into detail in part three. so if you guys haven't got any of the books yet go on amazon look at james church ward buy them read them enlighten yourself yeah yeah it's 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 exciting. It's an exciting time to be alive. All right, you guys. I'm gonna put all of Hillis's information as always in the description box. Please use his discount code this episode for if you'd like to purchase the Spooky Two machine. And I'm gonna be putting so so the discount code will be up at the top of the of the of the description box where all the sponsors are. Down below under show notes, though, I will have Hillis's channel, his website, all that kind of stuff. So you can get in touch with Hillis yourself if you are interested in exploring this. Um, alternative way of healing so thank you so much hillis thank you and yes um everyone be on the lookout for june 21st i'm doing two summits that day uh link uh, for those in the bio it's free registration everything is free i mean i have two more coming up that i think are going to be free also so stay in touch and stay tuned <laughs> well thank you so much guys we'll talk to you soon bye everybody